You're watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales, in the beautiful by nature Texas and Caicos Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. I'm Tadlene Daffrelin, and thanks for watching Sun TV. At a time when members of the public continues to express concerns about crime, three of the country's top police officers sought to assure the public that the police force has matters under control. The three senior officers, Assistant Commissioner of Police Rodney Adams, Superintendent Wayne Jones, and Acting Superintendent Kenny Grant, held a press conference at the police headquarters on Old Airport Road on Tuesday, February 19. Adams gave an overview of crime figures Noting that for the period January to December 2012, there was a decrease in crime when compared to the same period in 2011. Adams said 29% of the crimes committed in 2012 were detected, while in 2011, 18% were detected. We hear more of what he had to say in this report. From 31st of December 2012, there were a total of 2,704 crimes reported as being committed throughout the Turks and Caicos Islands. After police investigation, 11 of these incidents were reclassified as no crime. Therefore, there was a total of 2,693 crimes reported as being committed throughout the Turks and Caicos Islands. 775, or 29 percent, were detected. Meantime, Jones said that despite the challenges, they are determined to combat crime. He said it is important for the police to work along with the I also worked along with the criminal investigation department and assist them where, uh, where necessary and when necessary in relation to fighting crimes and other ills in the community through providentialis. I know there's a number of challenges that we are facing and we are determined that we will accomplish these and defeat these challenges once we get the right equipment and other resources that this to fight and combat crime. We cannot continue to uh, promote Turks and Caicos to the beautiful by nature. Um, you know, place to come and relax, perhaps you not know, to enjoy the sun, sea, and sun. But yet we still have our share of responsibility and our share of problems in respect of criminal activities here. And it's our duty to work along collectively with members of the public to ensure that we nip these community bills in the butt. And as a person who is known to me through reading a lot of documentary, a gentleman by the name of Sir Robert P. He was responsible for establishing the Metropolitan Police Force. And one of his nine principles of policing, the one that I have selected is the one in the States that the police are the public and the public are the police. The new CEO has been appointed at Interhealth Canada to run the hospitals in Providenciales in Grand Turk. She is Jill Marjorie, a qualified and experienced nurse who started in her new role on January 20th and who has replaced Dr. Roger Chasman, who was CEO of Interhealth from the inception. In an interview with Sun TV, Marjorie says she is well qualified for the job and had this to say. Almost 25 years of experience in uh, managing hospitals. Uh, I've worked as a CEO, a chief operating officer, and also a chief nursing officer at numerous hospitals throughout the United States. Um, in both big hospitals up over 600 beds and then smaller ones down, you know, 120 beds. Um, I am a nurse by background. And so I bring uh, a very special perspective to the CEO role um, because uh, in the capacity of a nurse, I am very sensitive to um, how healthcare is being provided to our patients. And also I'm very sensitive to how this organization interfaces with the other members of the healthcare community at large. Sun TV also asked her to address reports about challenges with adequate staff and she said there are a number of factors that can contribute to patients having to wait long to be treated. 
I don't know that we have a lack of mm -hmm. staff yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we have been challenged with the, um, the quick replacement mm -hmm. of some staff positions uh, because of the challenges with the work permit process, etc. Uh, and I think also it goes back to uh, looking at that assessment of services. We, uh, we may have people experiencing longer than usual wait times, but until I can get in and find out more information, I don't know if that's because we don't have enough physicians. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because we don't have enough support staff. I don't know if we've really looked at the efficiency of how we move patients through the system. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think of you know business and Q analysis, you know, um, there's uh, you know several different elements that can contribute to a weight, mm -hmm. and it may or may not have anything to do with staffing. The new CEO also said the public needs to be educated about how to use a hospital and also about why they can't always be seen right away. I think that there are some areas also where I would like to see us do a better job of communicating with the public uh, and communicating with the community about expectations. Somebody may come in uh, to the emergency department and expect to be seen because they're, you know, having vomiting uh, or, or something like that and they're feeling very ill. At the same time, and they may think they're in the queue to get taken care of, which they are, but if concurrently to that an ambulance comes in with a patient in full, you know, cardiac arrest, uh, or a uh, victim of um, uh, trauma from a motor vehicle accident, the person who is the sickest has to get taken care of first. And the person who's, who's you know, vomiting, you know, they may think, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I'm really not feeling well. Um, but they may not know that the ambulance has, you know, brought somebody else in that's sicker. And so we as an organization need to educate the community uh, and educate the public on the nature of emergency departments, you know, what's happening, you know, uh, why they may not be seen right away. And then also what can we do to support people who um, may be using the emergency department as their private physician instead of going to their you know family physician for that that vomiting you know so like using the right resources i'm todd dean and thanks for watching sun tv join us tomorrow when we bring you more news as it happens directly to your computer or mobile device <laughs>